Two of the absolute most talked about computers in the productivity laptop space, the MacBook and the Dell XPS lineup are basically the equivalent lines when you look at either Mac OS or Windows when you start talking your own personal computing needs. So when we compare them against each other, which comes out on top? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. I wanna preface this video by saying I really like both of these computer brands. I might not like everything they make, but I can objectively say that they both make good products. And no, neither company nor anyone else provided me either of these laptops, neither loaned or any other method. The only method that was used to get these laptops was me pre-ordering them. That sounded so much cooler in my head, but it did not sound as cool when I said it out loud. Okay, as these are two very different machines, let's quickly go over the specs and ordering information because it might not seem like it from looking at them, but these might be the two most single customizable laptops in either of their brand's product lineup. First off, let's talk the MacBook Pro 14. The base model cheapest that you can get this for is $19.99. For that money, you'll get the eight core M1 Pro processor, 14 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. That's also the model that I personally own, and I would probably say if I was recommending the MacBook Pro 14, this is the model that I would recommend. Inside of that purchase screen though are a ton of different CPU options, ranging from that 8 core M1 Pro to a 10 core M1 Pro, and even the craziest of all, the 10 core M1 Max processor with a 32 core GPU. You can also bump this up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory and an eight terabyte solid state drive. And if you want the beefiest MacBook Pro 14, that's gonna cost you $58.99. Or for some context, just a little bit more than a brand new Yamaha R3. Yikes. But if you think that's the only expensive laptop today, I have some sobering news for you, my friend. The Dell XPS 15 does have a lower end base model compared to that MacBook Pro, and you can get that base model for $12.99. Yeah, almost an $800 difference. For that base model, you'll get the six core Intel i5 11400H processor, integrated Intel graphics, eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. Much like the MacBook though, there is a ton of customization and upgradability from the ordering menu itself. You can go up to an eight core i9 processor, dedicated NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti graphics card, and then specking this out all the way will also include 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and an eight terabyte solid state drive. Plus Plus, additionally, you can spec into a UHD plus panel instead of the standard FHD plus display. And that maxed out version will cost you $48.99 or roughly the same as a 2022 Honda CBR300R. Yes, the Dell is already $1,000 cheaper, but you could also make it more cheaper -er because you can actually upgrade some of the XPS yourself. You can upgrade both the RAM and internal storage on this laptop. And a quick check on Amazon shows that the RAM would run about 245 bucks and two four terabyte solid state drives would run about $1,100 for a grand total, when you do this yourself and you buy the top of the line processor, graphics card and all that, 3,600 bucks. Team, that's a ton of savings. And I really like that you can do this on your own. You can customize it yourself. That's a huge benefit of most of the Windows laptops. Okay, we've got the specs out of the way. And before we even start the physical comparison, it looks like price-wise, the Dell is pretty far ahead as you can save so much cash. But let's not count our chickens before they hatch though. Let's next talk physical construction. Both of these computers are absolutely at the top of what I like about physical laptop design. They are both very sleek and very small. This is obviously a 14 inch laptop, so it's slightly smaller than the 15 inch XPS, but they are both able to easily fit inside of normal backpacks and neither is so heavy that it would be a burden to carry for long periods of time. Over on the MacBook side, you will get that full aluminum construction that we're used to from previous models, but this particular laptop, along with that MacBook Pro 16, they're slightly wider this year than on previous generation. Now what that thickness buys you is a ton of additional IO and you'll find an HDMI port, SD card slot, and three USB USB-C Thunderbolt 4 capable ports. I love that. I love that. And I hope more computer manufacturers will make their lineup more usable without necessarily only focusing on how small they can make the laptops. The Dell doesn't do terribly in this regard either. It also has Thunderbolt 4 ports. Specifically, it has two Thunderbolt 4 and one USB-C 3.2 port. Plus you'll get an SD card slot here. What I do like with the Dell though is even though previous models had HDMI and USB-A and they've taken those away, they do provide the dongle in the box that gives you that kind of capability. At the very least, if you're gonna take a port away, I appreciate you giving me some way to use that still without charging me for it. Like I've gotta buy a dongle here if I want USB-A. It just comes in the box with the Dell. I really like that. When we talk about the rest of the body, I have to give it to the XPS 15. I love 
how the Dell XPS computers look and how they feel. This carbon fiber shell that they've got on top of the keyboard face is the best looking and best feeling body that I've thus far seen in all of the laptops that I've checked out in the past two years. The MacBook isn't bad and I do like the full aluminum look contrasted against its black keyboard layout, but that Dell XPS body is just mwah, chef's kiss, it's the best. Talking about those keyboards, this part is gonna be better for different people. And I, people get frustrated when I can't just give single answers, but here it is gonna be, it's gonna depend on what kind of keyboard that you like to type on. The MacBook keyboard is a little clickier and it feels like there's a little bit less travel, but it's a very refreshing and easy keyboard to type on. The XPS keyboard is a lot more fluid and it feels a little squishier, but I, I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. This is a very comfortable keyboard to work on and I absolutely enjoy typing long projects with it. And that's what I mean, it's just neither is bad, they're both just good in different ways. Personally, I think the new Macs have the best keyboards that I've ever used, and I go out of my way to use the keyboards built into the body of this machine when I can. Looking above the displays though, I'm sorry, but this is pretty clear cut. Yes, you can add $200 to your spec and get a 4K plus OLED touchscreen panel in the XPS 15, which looks pretty darn good, and you will get some of the smallest bezels that you'll ever see on a computer. But if you get that higher end screen, you're gonna maul your battery life, and we will talk more about battery life later in the video, so I won't dwell on that here. The XPS 15, even with the FHD model, which is the one I own, is incredible, and you get a shocking amount of usable workspace with its 16 by 10 ratio. Plus, there's almost nothing at the bottom of the lip here. When you're working with the XPS, the screen seems to almost just float in front of you. But the new MacBooks have the best laptop display that I've ever seen, and you don't have to pay extra for them. Here you'll get a display that has one million to one contrast ratio, 120 hertz refresh, a thousand nits of brightness. It's just just gorgeous. I'm telling you, this display is shockingly good. And I'm sorry, there's just nothing else that compares. Yes, you'll get a notch here where you do not get any kind of notch on the XPS, but for me, that's a minor cosmetic thing. And it has not bothered me in the almost month that I've been using this. And I know I caught some flack in the XPS 17 versus MacBook Pro 16 video for me saying that here, but I'll say it again, the MacBook Pro screens they are the best you're gonna find. Also on top of that screen, both laptops have a built-in web camera. And again here, it's not much of a comparison. The XPS 15 has a 720p camera that to its credit does have Windows Hello, which is a very useful feature. But if you need that camera for meetings, it's gonna look pretty bad. 720p was fine in a world without as many teleconferences as we do today, but it's not okay anymore. The MacBook Pro will have both a 1080p camera but a camera that has a physically larger sensor inside of it. And while it doesn't look as good as say, an iPhone or an iPad camera, it looks pretty darn good. And I would consider this to be the best laptop based web camera I've ever seen. All right, we've talked all around the laptops, but it's time to get inside. Let's talk about power. Here's the thing. I have the eight core M1 Pro processor in my MacBook Pro 14 and the eight core i7 processor in the XPS. So both of these could have much higher performance if you were to spec them out a little higher. So today, I will not be making any objective number differences between these two. You can see a quick benchmark test that I ran, but again, that's not everything that these two machines are capable of. What I will say though is the most important part of laptop power is not really in the raw power, but it's in the usable power. And a lot of that has to do with the thermal performance on hand for each specific laptop. The MacBook works perfectly fine. And even from what I've seen from other actual benchmarkers using that top of the line M1 Max processor, you only really see a loss in performance at the absolute extreme ends of use. Things that no one would really do in any regular use scenario. However, the news is not as good for the XPS 15. The thermal system inside of this computer just can't keep up with even the mid-range i7 processor that I've got. You can see here that when we're doing minor video edits or renders, it will reach a point where the processor is limited on clock speed due to heat. And doing benchmarks is the same way. The issue is the XPS 17, while having roughly the same processors, also has a huge vapor chamber cooling system that easily handles the heat. The XPS 15 does not have a vapor chamber. It has a more standard heat pipe system and it just can't keep up. Now though, will you notice a big difference if you want a computer to do clerical type work? No, absolutely not. You'll never have a problem. But if you are looking for a media creation laptop, I'd probably point you somewhere else. One thing that I do think Dell will do better in is gaming. While it's not top of the line, the RTX 3050 Ti is actually pretty good for running older games or newer games at a lesser settings. Now I'm not much of a gamer, but in my short time playing a few games, the XPS works pretty well. The issue is while the MacBook has the far more power, it has to run x86 based games 
through its Rosetta 2 translation, and you will lose some measure of performance because of that. And the last thing I want to talk about today is battery life. And unfortunately, this again is a pretty cut and dry comparison. Dell says their XPS 15 can get 13 hours of battery life with the FHD Plus model and the bigger 86 watt battery. But if you go the OLED route for the 4K touchscreen display, you'll have to take around four hours right off the top. And that's taking their numbers strictly at face value. And since I'm doing that for Apple, I'll have to do the same for Dell as well. One thing to note though, is that if you are running this off the battery for any Windows laptop, you will not get the full power of the processor. You only get maximum power when plugged into the wall, which kind of goes against the whole purpose of having a laptop, right? If you're having a laptop and you're trying to do mobile work, you should be able to be as mobile as possible. Over on the MacBook, you get fantastic battery life. They claim to get roughly 17 hours of life, which has given me a ton of usable time over the past month of use. I rarely feel the need to charge this when I'm out and about, and it's nice having one less thing to worry about. I use this on a week-long business trip, and I think I only charged it two times. I mean, we didn't do a lot of work off of it, but not having to worry about it, so good. Plus, you'll get the full power of the computer when you are on a battery. Sitting in a coffee shop or sitting at your home office with a computer plugged in or sitting around a table collaborating with a team, in all of those situations, you'll get the exact same power level. And that's exactly what you should expect from a laptop. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Like I said in the beginning of the video, I do like what both of these companies offer. However, in this specific scenario, I have to give it to the MacBook. If you are looking for a computer to do office type tasks, Either one of these would be fine. I, any computer built in the last couple of years will be fine to do office work. I mean, my day job computer it uses like an eight core i7. You'll be fine. However, if you are looking for a content creation device or something that can do media processing or creation in general, I would easily give it to the MacBook for one main reason, the thermal performance of the XPS 15. I said the same thing in the XPS 15 versus 17 video from earlier in the year, that if the XPS 15 had a better thermal system, it would be a much better buy, but it doesn't, so you have to work around that. And that's not something that I'm willing to recommend off of. You'll notice there was not a you should buy video about the XPS 15. The MacBook will work, it will work fast, it has the best display, has amazing battery life, and it can fit into a working from home office setup without a dongle. I'm gonna be honest with you team, I do not envy companies that need to compete against these new MacBooks because they are dang good. And if you like this video and you would like to see a little bit more about either of these specific laptops, good news. I'll have a link right here to each laptop's video that you can find. You just got to click right here. So click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.